going to help you have a better understanding of how to operate the Alara system. First thing you need to do, of course, is turn it on. So, system on. Once it comes up, now sometimes when you come in, your fluids may already be running and you won't have to start at the beginning. But if you do, you turn it on and then the first question it asks is, is this a new patient? Um, you can say no, but I'll show you if you say yes, it's gonna ask you for the patient's identification. Our patients always have on an armband and so you can use that number. But for today, I'm gonna say it's patient A, one, two, three, four, five. So your alpha alphabet letters are here and then your um, numeric values here. So once I'm, I'm good with that, I'm gonna confirm that that is my patient. Now it's gonna ask me which channel I want to use. So it says we have a channel A and a channel B, A and B. I'm gonna hit channel select on my A pump and now it brings me up options, okay? So what am I gonna be doing today? I'm gonna do a basic infusion. And when you, if you're in doubt of what to pick, you can always go to basic infusion and it's gonna give you those two things you need to set, a rate and how much fluid is gonna go into my patient. So I've checked my order and the doctor ordered half normal saline. So I gotta prime my tubing. We use the Alaris tubing. When you're out there, let's say Alaris pump infusion set directly next to the um, tubing, you'll find blood tubing. Don't grab that. It has two spikes on it and you don't want that. You just want the one that says pump infusion set. Okay, so open it. And I'm sure you've been told how to prevent air bubbles from getting into your bag of fluid. You always want to Plant your tubing before you spike your bag. I've already um, un removed the cap from my fluid, and now I'm gonna remove the cap from my spike. And you can do this upside down or right side. I'll show you upside down. If your bag has already been spiked, because we have a tendency to reuse things in SimLab, you can't turn it upright. But um, the typical way you spike your bag Go ahead and fill your drip chamber halfway. Again, that helps us prevent air bubbles from getting in our tubing line. Once I have that in place, you can go ahead and prime your tubing. Start slow, making sure there's no air being created. All right, my tubing is prime. We would attach it to our patient's IV. He doesn't have one today. To put it into the system, I'm gonna, this, this little port here is gonna kinda sit on top. You stretch this down, the blue side goes into the blue chamber. Then I can just gently press down to make sure the tubing is in this latch. Close the door. I can unclamp now because my pump has clamped my tubing. So it is perfectly safe to put onto our patient's IV. It's not gonna infuse over um, too quickly. We've already chamber selected chamber A, basic infusion. Now I need to put in my rate and volume to be infused. For sake of this, our doctor has ordered our rate to be 75 milliliters an hour. So I'll click on rate using my numeric pad, 75. And once I think I'm good with that, I can now use my arrow beside v VTBI, volume to be infused. And I'm gonna set it, I have a thousand milliliters, so I'm gonna set it to 950 
just so it'll give me an alarm before it fully drains the bag. Then I'll have time to get a new one. Once I'm good there, it says press start. So if you look at the bottom to the very right, that's your start arrow. And once you've selected start, it's infusing into your patient. If you need to slow this rate down or speed it up, something's changed for your patient, all you need to do to change what's occurring is channel select A, and you're able to go right back in to where you were. Let's say now they said, let's increase it to 125. My volume to be infused does not need to change. When I'm ready, hit restart, well, start. And our rate has changed to the new prescribed rate. There are times in your scenario you may need to shut it down altogether. What's going in has become, has become dangerous to our patient. We don't need it to continue infusing. The easiest and quickest way to do that is just to turn it completely off. Hit channel off. And it's going to, well, let me hold it down for a few seconds. And it's going to completely power down. In the event you had two things going into your patient and I hit power off or channel off to this one, this one will continue to pump. Because we only had one thing going, my entire pump shut down. Okay. Well, this concludes your orientation video to the Alaris pump. There are other functionalities you may need to use but that is just basic operation.